Hello, I'm H. Sterling Burnett, Director of the Arthur B. Robinson Center on Climate and Environmental Policy at the Heart Institute. Every day, the public is barraged with news stories from the mainstream media that tells them climate change is causing disaster. It's a drip, drip, drip. It's like a Chinese water torture. The poll show, a recent poll is an interesting poll uh, that the news items have picked up on. The news services always pick up these polls. They show that it might be having this drip, drip, drip might be having the opposite effect because the number of people uh, worrying about climate change <laughs> over the past couple of years has declined in the U.S. Um, so you can see PBS, uh, they covered it. A lot of, a lot of news outlets covered this story. But let's go to the actual poll because that's what's in interesting. Um, so this survey from the University of Chicago and the Associated Press, among others, it uh, questioned adults 18 and older, their thoughts on climate change. And uh, as almost every poll does, almost every poll does, the majority of people believe that climate change is happening. I'd be concerned if they didn't because climate change is happening. I don't know very many people who say that's not true. Um, but less than a majority now, uh, or, or uh, yeah, less than a majority now, unless they've experienced an extreme weather event, as you can see from the poll, think that humans are mostly to blame for it. Uh, other factors are responsible. So uh, the message isn't getting through from the mainstream media that humans are causing dangerous climate change. What's more interesting is the number of people who are uh, concerned enough to actually pay to fight climate change has declined dramatically and declines uh, the more you want to pay. So only 38% of adults would agree to a carbon fee of $1 a month to fight climate change. They're worried about it, but they don't want to pay more than $1 to fight it or even $1 for what 62, 62% of the people. If you up that fee to $31, <laughs> uh, support drops, I mean, to $10, support drops to 31%. So $120 a year, these very concerned people won't pay to fight climate change. Uh, what's also interesting, you know, th th there, there was, there were actually 20% of the people in that poll uh, said they would pay $100 a month to fight climate change. 20, 21% of the people. So I looked into it. It turns out that about 20% of the people in the U.S. earn over $100 $50,000 a year annually. I'll wager that 80% of the people who said they'd pay $100 a month were in those top two income brackets. You weren't getting 30 people who earn $30,000 a year or $50,000 a year saying they'll pay an extra $100 a month <laughs> to fight climate change. What's also interesting is, uh, you know, like I said, every day you can't you can't open a newspaper, you can't go online, you can't watch TV news without seeing a story about climate change destroying the earth. And yet the number of people who uh, are really concerned about it and who think humans are causing it has declined since 2018. And that's across all parties. It's not a partisan. It declined from 72 percent to 60 percent for Democrats. Independents. Uh, 61% to 42%. And Republicans, well, they've stayed about the same. So the ones that were convinced before or convinced now, uh, the the ones that weren't convinced then haven't been convinced by any of the, the uh, propaganda that's been put out there. Overall, support has dropped from 61% to 49% uh, in the idea that humans are causing it. Now, um, there have been many, many proposals to... Uh, fight climate change. One of them is, well, let's uh, get an electric car. Despite how bad uh, they believe climate change is, 60% of Americans say, or, or only 40% of Americans say that they're considering an electric car for the next purchase. Most aren't. I mean, 60% say, yeah, we're worried about climate, uh, of the people that are worried about climate change, say, yeah, we're worried about it, but we're not even thinking about buying an electric car. 
So they're not going to drive an electric car to save the earth. Um, now, a majority of people support, or almost a majority of people, support tax credits to get people to buy electric cars. Well, why not? Those people, you know, we know that 40% of them say that they're at least going to consider it. So they want the government to pick it up. But a majority of people do not support ending uh, all fossil fuel use. Uh, very few people support ending all fossil fuel use. So Biden's net zero goal and getting rid of 60% of the gasoline, you know, internal combustion engine cars, that doesn't have public support, folks. Uh, he may he may pretend it does. He says everybody's on board, but the polls show differently. This chart demonstrates what uh, what I've said for a long time. Support for climate change is a mile wide and an inch deep. Um, when asked, it, it, it's very easy for people to say, yes, I care about climate change. It's very important to me. It's somewhat important to me. Polls show most people somewhat are very important, at least until this recent poll that said the support for that is even dropping off. But most polls show a majority of people uh, are concerned about climate change, but they're concerned about everything. When you ask them about crime, oh yes, uh, we're very concerned about crime. When you ask them about education, very concerned about education. Healthcare, almost always the top, very concerned about healthcare. Economy, yep, very concerned. It's only when you ask them to rank it. So if, you know, what are the most important issues ranked that you really know how deeply concerned they are? And uh, this Pew poll shows what every other poll has shown before. Climate change ranks near the bottom of issues of concern near the bottom. It's usually the bottom or the second to last. And I think Pew got tired of showing that perhaps. And so they added categories I've never seen before. Now, it's not surprising that dealing with COVID is, uh, it's not very important to people right now because it's largely you know, gone away. It's not, you keep seeing commercials, get your free test, but not, it's not nearly as prominent as it was a couple of years ago when COVID ranked near the top. Dealing with challenges facing parents. I haven't seen that one before. It just shows me that most people don't think it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a parent and that children are their responsibility. And so I'm not surprised that the public doesn't think government should be involved in raising children. Uh, issues around race. That one surprised me a little bit. I hear a lot about race, but evidently it doesn't concern people as much as climate change. But if you took out dealing with parents coronavirus, you know, climate change, it still ranks near the bottom, even in there. Global trade, I never hear anyone talk about global trade. Um, 21 issues. It's the first time I've seen 21. Usually it's 15, 16 issues. Um, 21 issues, climate change ranks 17th. So this isn't new, by the way. It's not new. Climate change always ranks last or dead last on these surveys. In fact, I wrote about some polls in 2019 because these surveys are asked generally by the same organizations every year. But the UN had a poll, got 7 million respondents from 195 countries. It asked participants to rank 16 priorities. Quality education ranked first. Action tank on climate change. This is worldwide, folks. This isn't just the U.S. It ain't a few thousand people. 7 million people. That's pretty amazing. They ranked climate change dead last out of 15. It received 300,000 fewer votes than access to telephone and internet. <laughs> um, in the end, people may be concerned about climate change, but it doesn't rank near their top concerns, despite the fact that politicians act as if, you know, Biden, climate change is the centerpiece of his administration. It's hard to understand where he gets that. It not, it's certainly not trickling up from the people. It's maybe trickling up from green lobbyists, from woke activists that support him, but it's not trickling up from the people in general. Now, what's interesting, and you know, we started we started talking about this earlier, how little people were willing to pay, right? This is not new. Yeah, you, thirty eight percent aren't willing to pay, or only thirty eight percent are willing to pay a dollar a month to fight climate change. 
Well, a 2019 poll from the Washington Post and the Kaiser family uh, was even more amazing to me. Look, 60% of the Kaiser family poll that was in my 2019 article, um, they, uh, they said, <laughs> this is amazing, that the world had less than 10 years to prevent the worst effects of climate change. Um, a majority of those respondents said we had less than two years to act. So it's already too late, according to them, because that was 2019 and we're now in 2023. Uh, 70% were very or somewhat worried about climate change would harm Americans' health. Okay, so you think the world's going to end in two years or 10 years. How much are you willing to spend? Well, 51% of those surveyed uh, would be strongly or somewhat that would be somewhat or strongly opposed to paying a $2 monthly tax on residential electric bills to fight climate change that they think is going to kill us in 10 years. Similarly, 61% would reject a 10 cent a gallon tax on gasoline. And just like with the more recent survey, as the numbers go up, you know, you make the tax 20, the, the gasoline tax 20 cents, you make the uh, fee on electric bills uh, $20. The support, the minimal support that they already had plummets. So, um, and this is, a, you know, what's tricky is they then ask, oh, well, do you support electric vehicles? Oh, well, do you support uh, uh, bringing more wind and solar power? This is tricky because you say you won't pay a dollar a month on your electric bill or you won't pay $10 a month uh, on your electric bill. And then they say, oh, well, but do you support wind and solar? Yes. The problem is they don't understand that that's going to add more than $20 a month to their electric bill. If it was framed, if the question was framed, we can fight climate change with wind and solar. Do you support $20 a month added to your electric bill to add wind and solar to the grid? <laughs> the support would evaporate. Because then they have a dollar figure attack. It's only when they think it's not going to cost them anything or when the lie is told that solar or wind is cheaper than fossil fuels uh, that they say, oh, yeah, we support that. Uh, no $10 a month fee, no $1 a month fee, but we support wind and solar. Oh, yeah, we support subsidies for electric vehicles. And then we don't show that how much it's going to cost the average person. So um, in the end, polls show two things. Well, until recently, like I said, the most recent poll shows not even a majority of people are really concerned about climate change, but almost 50 percent. So typically polls show many people are concerned about climate change, but it's not the most important issue for them. Even sometimes when they think uh, the world could end in 10 years, which is really odd to me. Um, and. They think we should fight climate change, but we don't want to pay for fighting climate change. So they evidently think future generations or that uh, resources fall like manna from heaven and we're not paying for it when we implement these plans to fight climate change. But we are and we're paying much more than people say when they're confronted with it. Here's what it's going to cost you to fight climate change. No, is what they say. So um, that's something to think about when you hear. The public is behind a climate, you know, the battle for climate change. Know that yes and no. The answer is, yeah, they're concerned. No, they're not willing to pay very much.